Goedenavond, dames en heren. Alweer voor de vierde keer SDTV de show. We zijn deze aflevering nieuwsgierig hoe het onze sportvrienden in de hele wereld vergaat in deze coronatijd. Um, ik zal de gasten, want uh, ze komen uit uh, Engels sprekende delen van de wereld, in het beste Engels uh, interviewen. En hoewel we geen ondertiteling hebben, dacht ik dat een beetje Nederlander, die spreekt ongetwijfeld toch wel een beetje Engels. Uh, naast de gasten, Kurt Whiteside, Steve Allen, Stanley Dolly, Kate Chantiel, Allison Spinas, Veilainis en Elda G. Lardy. Um, hebben we natuurlijk ook nog het moordspel. We hebben een newsflash. En Jack Easton wil ook nog eventjes langskomen. Ik zou zeggen, laten we beginnen. Okay. Um, hello, Kurt. We are glad hey. to have you in our show. And we want to ask you, how is life in Ohio and how is the coronavirus influencing you in your daily life? Crazy enough that uh, life is similar across America, a little bit different zones have a little bit more serious issues in our area. It's not as serious. Uh, we officially opened our state today. Uh, a little bit more, it's going by graduation, 14 days, the first phase, second phase is 14 days, the third phase is the last 14 days. Uh, my employees uh, are all essential, so our employees, I, myself, we've been working. On the softball front, uh, it's been a really big struggle. The high school season has been canceled. The summer ball season has been delayed, so we've got a lot of athletes out there trying to work to play or train or something and of course there's nothing organized that can happen at this moment so on the sport front it's been very tough uh, you are owner of q sports what um is q sport all about yeah we're interesting uh we before uh, as we were involved with the cup in the netherlands we actually have another event that's a q sport and the umbrella happens to be several things that we do with uh athletes we have a thing called the road show where we actually go to locations in and in, in and around our state to teach athletes to be better athletes uh, we have uh, two showcase events that we normally put on of course those all have been put on hold because we can't get together but by and large our goal is to teach athletes to become better and with the uh we actually bring in college coaches to teach them we bring in specialists in pitching and hitting and fielding and recruiting to teach these families about the and little idiosyncrasies of how to get to a good level, like Kate, for example, or Allison, that kind of level. Okay, and and uh, so I heard your. Th there's not much uh, in your surrounding, but is the coronavirus influence Q sports? Because you have uh, athletes all over the United States, I think. Yeah, uh, we can do uh, right now. We would probably be in the midst of our fourth or fifth what we call Roadshow, in which we take uh, a team of college coaches and, and instructors to varying areas, that is off. That is not happening in 2020. Um, our showcase events happen a little bit later in the year. We don't know whether they're going to come to be. But by and large, right now, it's um, obviously. OK. As we all uh, know, you are part of the American uh, delegation from the Indoor Cup. We are see you every year. Do you have any news about uh, the Indoor Cup for 2021? Yeah, we had a good discussion with our Dutch colleagues yesterday. We talked to our travel coordinator, uh, consolidator, I guess you might call her. Uh, we've talked to everyone in line with what we do, and we are full steam ahead based on projections of what countries are going to be doing, what we feel what's going to happen. It's eight months and 11 days away, so we've got plenty of time to get something together. And a lot of this stuff might be behind us. It might be a changed event, 
uh, in that uh, there could be masks having to be worn in the stands or something, but uh, by and large, we are full steam ahead. Well, I look forward uh, to it. Well, I thank you very much uh, for your uh, presence here. Um, we see you later. Okay, sure. Thank you much. Okay, we have now uh, Steve Allen. Welcome. Hi. Nearby Seattle. How is life in the northeast of the USA? Well, it's actually the northwest of the USA, but we won't. We won't. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of that, uh, times, it's too it's too less for me. Okay, well, northwest of the United States. Hey, we're we're doing fine. Other than the fact that we're tied down like everybody else is, all of our sports are on hold, like uh, the rest of the world. Uh, as you probably heard, that little league shut down yesterday, canceled all the World Series for this year. Uh, that's kind of a real disappointment. Uh, it'll be interesting to have uh, uh, August off though. For in like 15 years <laughs> so it's something to be said there but uh it's a real disappointment not to be able to see all of our friends again okay we heard also uh, about a wedding last week what kind of experience was that during this uh, corona time well it was pretty stressful for the uh, bride and groom they had their set for a big wedding and it ended up being 12 people including them uh, all wearing face masks uh 12 people spread out in a church that would probably hold 500. So it was very different, but it'll be something that they'll plan on redoing it again in October and having a big party. So they'll make up that point. Okay. Um, last year we met at the Reginald's uh, Junior and uh, Senior uh, League Championship for Africa. Can you tell us something about the uh, regional tournaments because they are also cancelled and will you stay on uh, for uh, the next year well i plan on staying on uh, uh volunteering for little league we find it my wife and i both find the highlights of our life uh we both umpired professionally in uh, high school and some college but still where our heart is the volunteer aspect of the league is is really where it's at watching these uh these kids develop and, and uh and uh, hit their potential and then move on to college and other things. It's great. You were in Holland with uh, Roof and uh, Jeka in Brabant. Can you tell us uh, something about that? Uh, they were very fine tournaments. Uh, we have lifetime friends there. As a matter of fact, a number of them have been over to visit, stayed at our homes now. Uh, we've gone over and stayed in their homes. Uh, it's just a great facility, great people, and uh, they know how to put on a good tournament. Um, the World Series. You are um, you have the Junior League softball organization. Can you tell us about uh, that, uh, please? Yeah, uh, Joanne and I got involved in in 2003. Was selected to be an umpire at the World Series uh, to fill in for a person who was unable to make it, and uh, we kind of fell in love with the whole program and what it was, and we've been on there ever since. To where we're both now uh, co-assistant tournament directors some 16 years later. And uh, that's how we national friends. Uh, if it hadn't been for getting involved in Little League and then starting in 2006, going over to Europe, um, I think our lives would be a lot uh, less exciting than they are now and a lot less interesting. Okay, thank you very much, Steve. We will see you later.
Hey, Kate. Good to see you again. Hey, Obes. Good to see you. It has been uh, a while that we uh, met. You left uh, the Netherlands uh, to start coaching in the state of New York. We see uh, horrifying news about New York coronavirus. How are you experiencing life during this crisis? So for me, um, we're obviously in the lockdown with the stay-at-home order. Um, I've been pretty much inside since about March 12th or 13th, and only going outside for walks or pick up, pickups uh, at the grocery store. So for me, life is really different. Um, softball was canceled, of course, but the horrifying stuff that you see, like I'm experiencing that just the same way you are, which means to read it on the news and to see it on video. Um, fortunately, I haven't been exposed to any of that. So. Okay. Uh, you are working as an assistant uh, coach uh, at the University of Albany. Can sure. you explain us uh, how the 2020 season went? Yeah, so it started, uh, the college season starts in the fall, of course, and everything was normal. Um, we started traveling games the last weekend in February. So we traveled to Florida and came back. Um, and we traveled back down to Florida for a second weekend and came back. So we played two tournaments. We had played 11 games in total. And on the Thursday, Thursday, March 12th, we were supposed to leave campus. Um, we had a staff meeting that morning with the whole athletic department, and shortly after, we decided to cancel that trip. Um, we got the girls together to let them know, and we held a practice, but that whole day there were meetings going on um, throughout conferences in the NCAA and among the NCAA themselves. By 4 o'clock that afternoon, uh, the entire NCAA had shut down spring sports for the rest of the year. Right now, now um, I haven't been to campus since that day. Haven't seen the kids. Um, we're doing weekly Zoom meetings with our team, and we've started like weekly challenges with the team. So we split our kids into three different groups, and and every week we give them like a fun social media challenge. Last week they had to post pictures of themselves as babies, uh, t-ballers, and middle schoolers uh, to a private Instagram account just for the team. So just Gives them a chance to work together a little bit and have a little bit of fun. Okay. What's the plan uh, for the near future and maybe also uh, the fall of uh, 2020? So the very near future, of course, the seasons are canceled. So we don't hold out hope of playing any games. That's a foregone conclusion. Um, the summer is still up in the air, but I think optimism on our side is as far as recruiting, the, the summer tournament organizers are still staying optimistic, hoping to have tournaments go on maybe in July and August. Um, but we have to wait and see on that. And then the further out you go, the more uncertain it becomes. So for fall, we're planning as if everything will be normal. So that means planning um, our schedule, planning a return to campus, all of our normal things we're going through. But I know that our university has put out a memo and said that they're planning for three different contingencies. So they've got a plan for coming back totally normal, 100% in person. They've got a plan for 100% online and they're developing a hybrid plan. So the further out you go, and that means months, the more uncertain it becomes. And we're planning for all of the above. Kate, thank you for your contribution at the show and uh, stay healthy. You too, Kovas, thank you.
weer. Dan mag ik mij even voorstellen. Mijn naam is uh, Jack Easton. Goedendag, Jack Easton hier. U weet wel van die knuppel. En van het supporter van het Nederlandse softball. Er gloort hoop aan de horizon. Congratulations with your new job at the uh, ESF Communications Director. Thank you, Carlos, and hi everybody. Thank you for having me. As we all know, Italy is hit extremely hard by the coronavirus. How is life at this point in Italy, in Naples? Yeah, well, it's true. Um, coronavirus hit Italy quite hard. Um, we are the third country in the world for a number of cases, and we're currently in a quarantine. Um, in the last 45 days, I've been out just three times, so <laughs> it's hard for sure. Uh, also for softball, uh, team practices are not allowed, so we train at home. And for me, I'm working more on conditioning, so more on my personal strength than uh, on technique. Okay. Your technique was always great, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> what does the uh, ESF uh, communication director do? Well, let's start off saying that I'm a newbie. I started this job in February, and it's definitely a different season than the one that I expected. So, um, Going back to the question, what I'm doing uh, in this month is basically taking care of delivering the news for ESF, so managing the website, newsletter, uh, managing social media together with Dominica Mercenava as well. I'm usually the person that is in contact with the organizers of the tournaments and national federations, and also usually, um, like lately, five, 
Uh, we've been working very hard uh, on the streaming platform uh, WSB Europe, which is baseballsoccer.tv. And along with mm -hmm. Joanna okay. Butler, we are streaming a lot of games from the past to give relief to all those people that are back at home. And how are you experiencing your new job? Well, um, first of all, I like it a lot. And of course, it's different from what I expected, as I said before, because at this point, I I thought I would be preparing for the summer events. Um, but uh, I can say this has been incredible months. I am learning a lot, and I'm very thankful um, to the ESF board for giving me this opportunity. Also to Elena Novotna, which is the prior um, communications director of the European Softball Federation. And, well, I hope to do my part to grow the sport, the sport that I love. Okay. Most of the uh, ESF tournaments uh, have been uh, cancelled. What are your thoughts about this? Do you think we have a good chance on playing the tournament? Well, this is not an easy question to answer for sure. Um, well, uh, let's start off saying that ESF had no other choices but to postpone the championship to September. Uh, also, um, the decisions uh, were made to leave more time to the national federations to play the national championships. Um, what I can say is that EFF, uh, EFF number one priority is the one to keep all the people involved in the tournament safe. And But um, also it's true that the legal framework in Europe is changing constantly as um, Kate was also saying, and we are monitoring the situation, and we hope to actually have an answer for this to give to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we met in Foley watching uh, our uh, SE TV broadcast during the Premier Cup in 2018. You love working with us in the camps, you command during the games. Do you see any involvement for SDTV for the European Cup for national teams in 2020? Uh, well, thank you for reminding me of uh, the Cup in for me, which is definitely a, a fun time to remember. Um, you know how much I appreciate your work, but this choice, uh, like uh, live streaming, is not up to yourself, it's up to the organizers. And I know you already have um, an agreement for the under 15, so I'm very happy that I will have the chance to work with you again. Okay. And um, we always will help if we can, uh, Elda, that you can be sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Douglas. Uh, I will remember. Hope to see you in September. Thank you for information. Hope to see you soon, too. Stay safe. Antwoorden op het tekst aan Tigers moordspel zijn.
De moord is gepleegd in het FC Twente stadion, de Grolse Vesten. De moordenaar is Ilse de Lange en het moordwapen is een grols biertje.